Have you ever wondered why pizza today is so delicious? The taste of it is always calling you, making you want more and more. And considering how tasty pizza is, it's pretty affordable. It's almost as if there's an ingredient, or two, or three, or four, that makes pizza so delicious and cheap. My name's Lily, and growing up, pizza was my absolute favorite. We had pizza every single Friday night. I couldn't wait to sink my teeth into a hot, cheesy slice. It was a tradition, a comfort, a treat that made the end of the week so special. But as I got older, I started questioning what I was eating. Why did this beloved food always seem to come with so many warnings? Why did it make me feel sluggish, bloated, tired, make my skin break out? I decided to dig deeper and what I found was shocking. The pizza I loved so much had changed and not for the better. In today's video, I'm going to take you on a journey to discover what's really in a slice of pizza and what led me to quit eating it. At the end of the video, I'll share different ways that people can make healthy pizza at home and the best pizzas to buy in the grocery stores. Pizza has a rich history that dates back to Naples, Italy. In the late 18th century, pizza was a humble food for the poor, sold on the streets, and in simple eateries. It was made with the simplest, freshest ingredients. Flour, tomatoes, basil, mozzarella cheese, and olive oil. Each pizza was a work of art baked to perfection in a wood-fired oven. The secret to its magic was it was coming from these basic ingredients that were fresh, local, and free of anything artificial. The dough was hand kneaded, the tomatoes were ripe and bursting with flavor, and the mozzarella was made from fresh buffalo milk. But fast forward to today, the pizza we know is a completely different food. This is a Domino's pizza store. Pizza, pizza. Gather around the good stuff. The kids are hungry. Today, pizza has become a mass-produced, highly processed product with an ingredient list that no one can pronounce that includes a concoction of toxic chemicals and inflammatory additives designed to keep costs low and profits high. It includes things like high fructose corn syrup, hydrogenated oils, even food coloring. A lot of these preservatives were added to make the pizza last longer, have a longer shelf life, and to enhance the flavor and make the colors pop, because you know, we want a colorful pizza, don't we? But all of these added ingredients come at a cost to our health. So let's quickly move through the different parts of the pizza from the crust, sauce, cheese, and toppings, and what specific ingredients to look out for. First up, the crust. Modern pizza crusts often contain additives and preservatives like refined flour, dough conditioners, and seed oils. Now what's the problem with refined flour? To keep things simple, flour is a grain. And after all of my research, speaking with hundreds of different medical professionals and healthcare specialists, from general practitioners to brain health doctors, optometrists, dentists, cardiologists, gynecologists, podiatrists, archaeologists, chiropractors, plastic surgeons, pretty much no matter which healthcare specialty someone had from head to toe, they all generally agreed that most people should significantly reduce, if not completely eliminate grains from the diet, as grains can be very inflammatory, causing a lot of gut issues, leading to then potential brain health issues like Alzheimer's, dementia, depression, brain fog, and other negative health outcomes. No, I'm just getting warmed up. Some of you may be thinking right now, is this just another video where you tell me all about the nasty ingredients inside of U.S. grocery store food? Yes, that is exactly what this video is. But I think it's really important for us to know what ingredients and foods are we putting in our bodies. Yes, people ate pizza in the past, but the flour in the past is completely different than the flour we have nowadays. In the 18th century, flour was stone ground using a milling process, being significantly less refined, containing more natural nutrients, and there were no added chemicals or bleaches to achieve a whiter appearance. Whereas nowadays, especially in the US, there are big corporations that like to use funky preservatives and nasty chemicals to make flour. Why? Well, the short answer is... Hello, I like money. Nowadays, flour is made from wheat that has been genetically modified, that has a different protein structure, that has more gluten. The wheat is also sprayed with a lot of pesticides and other toxic chemicals, 
most flour is highly refined, meaning the wheat is stripped of its germ and bran, resulting in less vitamins, less minerals, less protein, less fiber, less nutritional value as a whole. And in doing so, this can spike blood sugars higher and chronically elevated blood sugars can lead to weight gain, obesity, diabetes, and in the long run, that could lead to things like heart attacks and kidney disease. On top of all of that, a lot of white flour is bleached white. And personally, I don't wanna be drinking bleach, therefore I don't want my food being bleached. Why do they gotta go make every color pop? I don't know. You can see how the flour in the past is completely different than the flour nowadays. Other than the refined flour in the crust, there's also dough conditioners. Now, the chemicals in these dough conditioners, which I'll put a list up on the screen of the specific ones to look out for, but they've been linked to causing gut issues and weakening the immune system. And the last main ingredient to be aware of in the pizza crust is seed oils. There's a long list of these inflammatory oils, which have been linked to high blood pressure, clogged arteries, and overall heart disease. So just the pizza crust alone, it's like, my word, what are you trying to kill me over here? Basically, the big food corporations get these commodities, corn, rice, wheat, oats, and they can make products, which are not food in my opinion, that are shelf stable, that won't, will not kill you acutely. So there's no danger of ongoing lawsuits because you kill my mama with this pizza crust or with this, this loaf of bread, but they are in fact slow inflammatory poisons to the human system. If you thought the pizza crust was bad, wait for the sauce. Why couldn't they just use a tomato? The main ingredients to look out for with the sauce are high fructose corn syrup, sugar, modified food starch, preservatives, artificial flavors, and colors. The problem with both the high fructose corn syrup, which is just sugar, and the sugar is, well, a lot of us already know what happens if we have excess sugar in the diet, and then things like the modified food starch, preservatives, as well as artificial flavors and colors have been linked to allergies, hyperactivity in children, gut issues, and ultimately cancer. And then with the cheese and toppings on the pizza, I will say this is definitely the best part of the pizza because even though brands are usually using the cheapest cheese they can find that has anti-caking agents, preservatives, food coloring, that said, the cheese and meat toppings still provide protein, calcium, B vitamins, vitamin A, and zinc. And so I think the cheese and meat toppings overall are still providing nutritional value and substance. So that, that's a win. So am I just someone who has too high of standards and hates America and pizza? Absolutely not. I think we should all have, not just have, demand higher standards for our pizzas as our obsession with convenience, affordability, long shelf life, and pretty colors has led us down a dangerous path and we're totally okay with it now. I hate talking smack about pizza because I like pizza too, but modern pizza just ain't worth it to me. And like I said, I'm going to show different pizzas to look out for in the grocery stores that have cleaner ingredients and then ways to make pizzas at home that are super easy and tasty. But first, if you're enjoying today's video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. And today's video is sponsored by Bond Charge. They have a red light face mask that my husband and I take turns using. This face mask can help with blemishes, fine lines, wrinkles, acne, sunspots. Overall, it can just help with the rejuvenation of the collagen within our skin and make our skin look more glowy and youthful. I just put the mask on my face, put the strap on the back, and then wear it for 10 minutes while I'm doing work, watching TV, doing the dishes. And so it's like two birds, one stone. I'm doing what I normally do around my house, plus making myself look younger in the process. There will be a link in the description where you can get 15% off the face mask, as well as my discount code with Bond Charge, that's Lily, where you can get 15% off of all of Bond Charge's different products. All right, the better pizza options in the grocery stores include Cabello's. This brand's known for their grain-free and gluten-free pizzas using almond flour and natural ingredients. They have no bad fats, no high fructose corn syrup, no added sugars, no artificial colors or flavorings, and so overall, it's a pretty solid pizza. I'd also look out for the brands Against the Grain, Banza, Amy's, Simple Mills Pizza Dough Kit, and American Flatbread. Again, I'm not saying pizza is health promoting, but if someone's going to have pizza, these are definitely the best options I've seen in the grocery store. 
I'm a big proponent of making better bad habits, meaning we don't have to be perfect. And if we're currently doing really bad habits, well, can we just make slightly better habits and just keep slightly improving and improving? We don't have to be perfect overnight, but if we're currently eating really bad fast food pizza or just any ordinary pizza we see at the grocery store, can we then be a little bit more intentional with our pizza choice and then maybe make our own pizza at home and then slowly just make better habits? Personally, I did not go from having pizza to no pizza, I made that transition with just healthier alternatives to pizza. And then slowly over time, I didn't really need pizza as much. And then now if I want a pizza, I can make a pizza at home. I've made two different pizza recipes at home. For the first option, I made the crust using six ounces of cheese, one egg and garlic powder mixed together in a blender. Once these ingredients were thoroughly mixed together, I poured the mixture out on top of parchment paper and then used a second piece of parchment paper to spread the crust out on my pizza tray. Bake this crust in the oven at 350 degrees for 10 minutes and then take it out, flip it, and put it back in the oven for another 10 minutes before turning the oven to broil and broiling for two more minutes. This crust comes out more like a flatbread. It's so delicious. And then add your toppings, put back in the oven for a couple minutes, and enjoy. I've also made a ground beef crust before by mixing 10 ounces of ground beef with Italian seasoning, two eggs, and one ounce mozzarella cheese. Keep in mind, this is a ground beef crust, so once it comes out of the oven, it'll be brown and a little greasy like a burger. I made sure to pour the grease out and paper towel dry the crust once it came out of the oven before adding on the toppings. If you enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up. That way this information reaches more people. I appreciate all of your guys' support and I'll see you in the next one.